Hey everybody, it's Doug. In this video, I wanna show you a cool feature when you are configuring components while setting up a data view in Customer Journey Analytics. And so we're gonna talk about configuring dimensions. So down here and over on the right-hand side rail here, this include, exclude values. And so let me go ahead and click on that. And this is a really cool configuration feature that is not available in Adobe Analytics, but we're happy to include it in Customer Journey Analytics. And the concept is somewhat simple. It's really just a filter of your data. But the fact that you can set it up during the configuration gives you some really cool use cases. And so I'm going to go over a few of these. However, first, I do want you to notice that, you know, when you turn this on, set, include, exclude values, by default, it'll be off. But when you turn that on, and you get these other things to appear, you'll be able to add as many rules as you want. As you can see there, I can add rules and I can take them away, etc. But you'll see here the match is if all criteria are met or if any criteria are met. So basically a Boolean and and a Boolean or here for when you have multiple criteria. It doesn't really matter if you have just one. It doesn't matter which one of those you select, of course. But you can see here that I've got this page title selected. And so really just these page names or these page titles, which ones do I want to include or exclude in my data view? So if I go over here, I can see the different criteria available, contains a phrase or a term or all terms. You know, these it's got all these different items here. It can equal it exactly. It can does not equal, starts with, ends with. You know, so this is basically your includes, like contains and things like that, and your excludes, which is like does not contain any term or phrase, etc. Now, before I go into some use cases, I do want to show you, because you might be wondering yourself, how does this differ from the filter in a freeform table? So let me jump over to a project. Okay, and I have a freeform table here with page titles, and you've got this filter right here. So if I click on page title, and if I go into advanced, it'll look pretty familiar. If all criteria are met, if any criteria are met, once again, and an or. And as I drop this down, contains a phrase, it's really those same things. And so what's the difference? Why can't I just do it here instead of doing it in the data view? Well, you can. But keep a couple things in mind. First of all, if you do it in your table, it's really only going to affect that table. And so that's, of course, very helpful when you are actually in your project and you need to edit what is in your table and, you know, leave only, let's say, you know, only put category pages in here or something like that. But if you want to be able to set that up ahead of time for your end users, see what we're talking about if I go back over to the data view is setting up the data view ahead of time so that your analysts have things available to them. So let me give a couple of use cases where that can maybe be helpful. Let's say I had a bunch of different error pages or pages that would come up, you know, if different errors happened on the site. I could duplicate this, right? So I could say page title, duplicate that. So maybe I'll just go ahead and do that. And I scroll to the top and I got page title too. And I could come into the component settings and say error pages. It'd be funny if I had an error in the spelling. Okay, error pages. <laughs> and then when I go down to include or exclude, it has to contain the phrase, you know, error colon or something like that. And, you know, that's, of course, if all of my page titles that are error pages start with that. But you see, it gave me a completely different component. So when your analysts are going through the components, they can have very quick access to this subset of pages that are just error pages. So it makes it very easy for them. And that, of course, goes out beyond pages, right? So if you have any of your dimensions that you would want to take a subset and make it its own dimension to be easily used, you know, maybe it's client ID and maybe you duplicate that and you have certain clients that are in a certain region. So you have something like Southwest client IDs or something like that, right? So it would make a completely different dimension that would be easy for your end users to grab and put into a report. And don't forget that it's not only for a freeform table, but it would apply to other visualizations like the flow or fallout visualizations as well. Okay, here's another use case. Let me jump back over to the project. 
let's say that I notice that I've got some pages in here that weren't supposed to show up. Maybe they were doing some testing or something like that, and it's, you know, there are pages that shouldn't show up in here, or items, again, any kind of items that shouldn't show up. And I'm going to pretend for a minute that these PRD pages are not supposed to be in there, and I've got a bunch of them I kind of go through here, and I'm like, oh, no, those PRD pages are showing up in here, clogging up my really cool report, and I don't want them in there. So in this case, I don't really need a new dimension to be a subset of my pages. I just kind of need to clean up my pages. So I go back to the data view and I make sure I have my page titles selected right there. And then I can say in my criteria does not contain PRD. And in fact, if I don't know if there might be uppercase or lowercase PRD, I can also deselect that one so it's not case sensitive. And that way it can take out all of the PRD pages from the overall page title component. And once again, this would apply to any of your dimensions. And so if you need to kind of, you know, remove items out of a dimension that shouldn't be in there when your analysts are going into the data, or again, the first use case where you want to make some new components that might be a subset of a larger one, then that's very helpful too. Anyway, I hope that gives you an idea of some of the great things that you can do with this include exclude feature in customer journey analytics. Good luck.